I apologize for our delay. We had some closed session items that uh, took some time. We did discuss uh, items B and C on the closed session agenda. Um, and I will be reporting out on item C in conjunction with uh, agenda item 17. On item B, there's, there's no uh, no public report to be made. Uh, so as soon as the council assembles, we'll get started again. I apologize for the delay. <coughs> to uh, convene the meeting of the City Council and Successor Agency and we'll begin our meetings as we always do with the clerk calling the roll. Councilmember Gordo? Here. Councilmember Hampton? Here. Councilmember Council Kennedy? Here. Councilmember Madison? Here. Councilmember Gostin? Here. Councilmember Wilson? Here. Vice Mayor Masuda? Here. Mayor Tornick? Here. There's a form of council president. Thank you. Councilman Madison, would you lead us on the pledge? I will, Mayor. And uh, as I do so, perhaps we could all uh, take this moment to express solidarity for the victims of the horrific shooting in uh, Florida and uh, redouble our efforts to be tolerant to all persons in Pasadena, irrespective of race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, etc. So, thank you. Please rise and uh, face the flag. Place your right hand over your hand. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Madison, and uh, I think uh, one of our plans was to adjourn tonight's meeting in, in uh, memory of the victims of that horrific uh, incident in Orlando. Uh, we also have a um, another loss that, that we'll be talking about, but first let's do the ceremonials. We have votes of office uh, to Deborah Dentler from the Environmental Advisory Commission, will be joining the Environmental Advisory Commission, and Joe Ford. Uh, who's been appointed to the Human Services Commission. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. <coughs> Joe Ford. I, Dr. Dentler. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly, solemnly affirm, affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all, Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. And without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties of. Discharge the duties of. State position. Human Service Commission. Environmental Advisory Commission. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about, about to enter. enter. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. 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 
Congratulations. Thank you. And, and thank you. Thank um, you, In addition to the um, adjournment in honor of the victims in Orlando, uh, the community did suffer another loss, um, and that was former Pasadena Police Chief Bob McGowan. Uh, former Pasadena Police Chief Robert McGowan died on June 7th. He was born in Los Angeles, moved to Pasadena at the age of two. In 1953, he was convinced by friends to take the police officer's exam, scored highest in the group, and joined the Pasadena Police Department in 1954. He was a graduate of Pasadena schools, majored in business and minored in law at USC. His 31-year career with the city took him through stints as traffic officer, fingerprinter, detective lieutenant, and chief of police from 1968 to 1985. He was the police chief when I came to work for Pasadena in 1982, so I remember him well. Bob served on numerous local, state, and national law enforcement panels during his career, including Governor Brown's Crime Resistance Task Force, he was president of the Los Angeles County Police Officers Association and 16th president of the California Police Chiefs Association. Chief McGowan is survived by his wife of 56 years, Ramona, and their children, Cindy and Steve. So with the council's consent, we will adjourn tonight's meeting uh, also in the memory of Bob McGowan. We have a, uh, I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, Bob McGowan is a resident of District 4. Got to know uh, Bob and his wife uh, very well, and uh, I support your, uh, your motion. Thanks. Thank you. We have uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Yes, Mayor, we have 10 speaker cards. Uh, first speaker is Paul, followed by Ar Audrey George. Followed by Michelle Dumont. Paul? Uh, good evening. Um, I'm going to speak on Jasmine Abdullah, um, the, the name um, that I believe you folks would, would have me, Jasmine Richards. Um, and uh, also, on, I also want to speak on, on this city. Um, I've had a chance before to address you folks, it was uh, throughout the course of your, what, three-year-long cover-up of the murder of Kendrick McDade, and um, in, in, previous, in previous opportunities to speak to you, I, I did touch on how image-conscious you are. That's obvious, right? City of Roses, right? you got a statue of Jackie Robinson out there. Your brand's important. It's clear your brand is important. I was just driving on Colorado Boulevard, and I saw the... Uh, the, the really, look, actually look pretty expensive um, artwork uh, honoring free speech. Even honoring my school, I went to UC Berkeley and you were honoring specifically the free speech movement with one of the, one of the images down there on Colorado Boulevard. Um, last week, I think that the council did a pretty good job of, again, acting image consciously like you cared about being the, the, the first city to ever commit a black woman to flinching. You seem to really care. But you said you were helpless. You said Michelle Dynaris is no longer controlling these charges, or by any least, I believe is how you said your name. You said it's now in the hands of Jackie Lacey. Your hands were tied. Why are people mad at us, right? Right? So, we now have a, a pretty clear focus um, on seven remaining misdemeanor charges. Ms. Bagneris could drop those charges. You are her boss, all of you. You appointed her, just like you appointed. Oh, Chief Sanchez isn't here. Just like you appointed Chief Sanchez. And you have the opportunity to, to, kind, of, to kind of throw down your, 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 your gauntlets, so to speak. Maybe that's not the best metaphor. You, you can, you can, you can be in that category for eternity of Flint, of Ferguson, right? You can be in that category, that infamy. Or you can actually make a stand now and drop the charges on Jasmine Abdullah. 
Because if you don't, you know this in your heart of hearts. You've lost this political battle. And you will continue to go down as a city interested in political persecution of someone who has spoken for her community, a community that has been neglected. Mr. Hampton over there is fighting for his community in ways he can. Miss Richards, Miss Adula fought tooth and nail for those kids that she works with. Tooth and nail for Anya Slaughter, Kendrick's mother. Well, could you so we're going to honor her rights. Could you bring your comments to the close? Yeah, I got it. Which side do you want, Terry? You want specific, Terry. Which side do you want? I'm on the freedom side. I'd like to see y'all on the freedom side. Audrey George, followed by Michelle Dumont, followed by Bill Watkins. Ms. George. Yes, hi. I'm here to ask that you drop all charges against Jasmine Abdullah. I know Jasmine as a righteous, courageous, and passionate activist and community organizer who is much admired for fighting for those in her community and for the rights of her people. Jasmine is not a violent person. She has, she's angry and has verbal altercations. But the way she's been persecuted, you would think she was setting fires and looting stores and throwing rocks. She has been mostly targeted and persecuted because she's a BLM member. And BLM, Black Lives Matter, is in itself smeared. I've heard of comments made during the trial comparing Black Lives Matter with the KKK, as other people might attest also. And, you know, the community's feelings about BLM are just spilling onto its treatment of Jasmine. I also want to just emphasize that Pasadena's image is being greatly harmed. I want you not to use this probation that has been put upon Jasmine as a tool to continue to suppress and prevent her ability to have free speech and peaceful assembly and continued activism. Those things are the foundation of our country, the ability to, to exercise those rights, foundation of our country. And I wish you would stop persecuting Jasmine Richards for exercising those rights. Thank you. Michelle Dumont, followed by Bill Watkins. Hi, my name is Dr. Michelle Dumont. I'm a retired professor of philosophy and women's studies from Mount St. Mary's University in Los Angeles. I've never done this before, but I've started to go to trials. Trials of the Black Lives Matter people, who Los Angeles seems really committed to spending all of its resources convicting, putting in jail, putting on probation, harassing, and persecuting. The trial of Jasmine Richards, or Jasmine Abdullah as we call her, was the most disgusting political conviction and prosecution that I have ever witnessed. Even the judge recognized at the end that Jasmine had very honestly done what she believed to be the right thing and that she did not deserve to be convicted in the way she was. One of the jurors wrote a letter saying that this conviction was all about bringing the charges in the first place, which should never have been brought. It's very hard to convince people, law-abiding, especially white people, to go against what the police tell them, to say that the police are lying or exaggerating or really persecuting someone. I witnessed Jasmine being taunted by police in the hallway of the court building. Numbers of us had to protect her from police walking by and taunting her, something that happens to her every time she meets with any police officers or every time they see her 
on the street. This is a political persecution of a woman who only wants her rights of free speech to be respected. And she only wants to build her community and protect the young people of this city. If you go ahead with these charges, Michelle, you are going to be on the list of people who have persecuted Jasmine Richards, the first Black Lives Matter person to actually serve time. This city will go on record as involved in a political persecution of a young black woman. I see her as one of the civil rights leaders of this century. History is going to show that you're wrong if you go ahead with these, these charges. History is going to condemn Jackie Lacey and Michelle for bringing charges in these cases. No other cities are doing it. You're alone. You're alone in your infamy. You and the city of LA are alone in your infamy. Good luck.